Hello, uh, I'm uh, a member of the Debian kernel team uh, and I'm also involved uh, in kernel development upstream and currently I maintain the uh, 3.2 stable branch. So a sort of a summary of how Linux stable releases uh, work at the moment. Uh, probably most of you know most of this, but uh, uh, after every stable release from Linux 3.x, uh, there are a series of updates to that, uh, by usually by Greg Crow Hartman, uh, number 3.x.y. Um, and these will be, these will have cherry picked bug fixes, sometimes new hardware support if it doesn't take a lot of, if it doesn't take a very big change to do that. Um, sometimes the fixes need to be backported because uh, the kernel APIs have changed. Um, and these updates continue uh, at least until Linus releases the next, uh, uh, makes another release. Um, and some versions are used as a base, some Linux versions uh, are, become the basis for a long-term stable branch, which can be maintained for several years. Okay. Uh, so that's how the stable update process works. The mailing list for this, uh, it's quite high traffic, stable at vigo.kernel.org. Uh, every commit to uh, Linux that has a CC to this list in its commit message uh, ends up being, uh, well, it's a candidate for inclusion in stable updates. Uh, Greg runs scripts that will uh, actually copy those to the list once Linux uh, has pulled those changes into his tree. Um, and it also report, uh, did it get applied to uh, certain branches, uh, could it, uh, and what if it failed because uh, the code around this, the code context has changed. Um, and anyone can nominate a, a change that ought to go into stable updates. Um, <coughs> once it's reached Lin Linus's tree, there's a file in the source tree documentation slash stable kernel rules dot text and that explains uh, what the rules are for what's what's acceptable um, and occasionally there are regressions because some change that got applied to a stable branch didn't really belong there uh, or it should have been uh, adjusted and it wasn't but otherwise everything has to be a Linux tree first Uh, so the maintainer of a stable branch um, will collect up changes for some period of weeks um, and will then send these out as a batch for review before making a release. Uh, those go to the mailing list, they also get sent to everyone named in the original commit. Um, and the review is supposed to catch things like this isn't needed here because the bug doesn't exist or this change is only going to work if if you take these other changes that it depends on um, or this is this has caused regression when we applied it in mainline and it's not yet fixed there uh, in which case once it's once there's a second fix is available we can take both of those into a stable branch um, following the review, that list of changes might need to be revised and then uh, the maintainer can make a, uh, can apply them to the git branch, uh, tag it, and if the maintainer is not Greg, then they need to get Greg to pull, and he then uploads to kernel.org. Uh, so what does this mean for distributions? Um, how many people here work on uh, their distributions kernel packaging? Okay. That's a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, so as a package maintainer, of course, you want to get 
uh, you want to get bug fixes as soon as possible, uh, at least if they're important enough for uh, the stable updates. Um, and also probably you get bug reports directly from uh, your users, you report them upstream, maybe you, uh, maybe you find a fix that's already been made and needs to be uh, backported. Um, maybe you can write the fix. And stable updates uh, should be a way of sh showing, that, showing those uh, fixes between distributions. Um, so you, do you, do you, uh, do you send fixes to, uh, do you nominate fixes for stable updates? Do you know about the process? Yeah. So I once had a fix, uh, but it didn't apply to the stable kernel because we had another patch that was needed before. And was it clear how to fix that up? Uh, how, you know, you should both of them, or was yep. the other fix too big? Possibly, but I didn't invest in for it into it because I'm not really a kernel developer. Okay, yeah. Uh, was there anyone else who's uh, who's actually active in in, in uh, kernel packaging? Okay. Um, this isn't going to be a very interesting talk, then, isn't it? We're hoping to have more uh, <laughs> get more response from the audience. Um, so. Yes, yeah, so, so distributions have uh, stable releases that uh, normally get maintained for a period of years and not for the two or three months between kernel releases. So the, uh, that means though that a long-term stable branch is, uh, is quite important or useful at least. Um, in the past, well, um, well, in fact, still active today, the Linux 2.632 branch uh, was used as the basis for a bunch of long-term supported distributions. Um, and that seems to have worked out quite well. Uh, lots of fixes. I counted over 3,500 uh, changes went into that branch, uh, mostly bug fixes. Um, but there hasn't been quite as much uh, uh, they haven't. The, the other long-term branches don't have. Don't seem to have been shared uh, between so many distributions. Probably because release schedules didn't really line up, but also because uh, there's a lot of. Maybe they could have lined up if we'd actually uh, talked about what plans and <laughs> and uh, try to settle on a, a common base version for uh, releases. Um, so I have no one to ask now, except for my except for myself. Um, I certainly want there to be a long-term stable branch for Debian releases, which is why I, I volunteered to maintain the, the 3.2 uh, branch long-term. Um, and I'm not the only person doing that, so um, there are... Uh, it's open to anyone who's involved upstream, who's who's uh, involved in the stable process, to take on one of those branches if it's useful for their whatever they're working on, whether they're in a distribution or embedded uh, systems or wherever they need a long-term support. Um, Um, so there's, uh, the the uh, documentation in the kernel source tree is kind of the FAQ for uh, stable uh, stable updates. Uh, anyone else have questions? Phil. So how often do you expect uh, that? Uh, Long-term stable kernels are forked off the main line. Well, the so the long-term 
branch is then just a continuation of the usual stable branch. So whenever, so Greg will pick one per year, but anyone who wants a long term, anyone who wants a long term, wants another stable branch to be long term maintained, can volunteer to do that. Um, they won't necessarily be accepted. That they, they have to be seen to be someone who's who's competent to do that. But you know, if you're if you are uh, act, if you are seen act, actively working upstream, um, then then you should be okay. Joss. Um, the number of changes in the 2.6.32 branch is pretty impressive. That means several commits per day on average, uh, which is already large for a, a project in itself. Uh, it's slowed down quite a bit recently. But, uh, yeah. yeah. What do you expect uh, for the 3.2 we use for Wheezy? Uh, do you expect uh, a big flow of changes uh, that will lead to uh, good usage for this uh, this kernel in the long term or should it be uh, less use less useful uh, there's certainly uh, quite a high rate of changes at the moment I have a hundred or so pending for the next uh, release um, and that's been collected over a period of two two to three weeks I think um, at the moment, there are actually a lot of distributions using 3.2, um, but that's, m I think, mostly Debian and Ubuntu derivatives. And I believe Ubuntu has, in fact, decided to move to 3.5, probably because of uh, hardware, uh, new hardware support, which, if it's any sort of, um, any trivial, trivial changes like adding a new device ID to a table, they're fine for stable, but quite often new hardware support is going to involve writing a, a lot of new code that doesn't doesn't go in there, and so that's one reason why uh, that's one thing that stable branches don't don't cover, and which distributions currently have to do always have to do for themselves, unless they're going to move forward to a new uh, release. Okay, so currently Debian is alone with 3.2. Sorry, currently Debian is alone with 3.2. No, currently Ubuntu still has 3.2, but they are probably going, I believe, going to change um, in a few months. <coughs> yes, that's the, they're still going to change to, an, they're still going to move the LTS to a new kernel version. <laughs> well, in fact, it's also something that uh, Susie has been doing with service packs. Yeah. A question on whether, say, hardware developers, say, designing new SOC support, should they go with a stable kernel or follow the upstream? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. It sounds like you're talking about adding. Are you talking about the development? Obviously, right. development has to go into Linux's tree, or well, new development has to go into Linux's tree first. Or are you talking about something like uh, uh, what you would use in a board support package? Or yeah. what? It's just that I'm seeing a lot, I mean, a lot of the work I do is with vendor supplied boards, and a lot of them are taking the long term support and putting their stuff on that as mm -hmm. a start and then supplying that to their customers. And the patch changes are not going upstream? or um, In some cases, the stuff doesn't get upstream in the end. Mm. Um, I saw this a lot. Uh, my last example is with the Marvel stuff, which they've they are finally getting upstream. But I've seen several vendors do this with taking a long-term supported kernel and providing that to their customers as this is what you should use on our hardware. That's yeah, that's not not uh, that's not terrible. But they should be getting the they really should be getting the changes upstream as well. Um, as we're working with some ARM SUCs and seeing some community boards there about every vendor that really cares about um, 
getting his, his stuff not only sold to, to the industry, uh, I think should really go for the, for the main line because um, those, those vendor supplied BSP packages, uh, BS packages tend to be horribly outdated after a year or so. Mm. You cannot reproduce it. You will never get that up, upstream. And um, I remember Thomas' talk from yesterday, very good, um, concerning the, the Marvel socks, where he said, um, Marvel hired us to get uh, their support into mainline, and we never ever even looked at their BSPs. We just redid everything from scratch. <laughs> because the, the vendor BSPs are outdated, broken, uh, whatever. And for me, uh, the only way is to, to really stick to upstream and get things um, in one by one. Sorry for, uh, mm. uh, that's not um, meant to, to uh, disregard your, your work concerning the stable currency. No, I, I, I'm honestly in, in agreement with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hey, so um, I know there's at least one maintainer who actually maintains his own stable tree, which is the networking maintainer. Do you, are not you afraid there's going the to who be... Who maintain uh, David Miller. Oh yes, yes. Do you? Are well, so well he maintains question? his own stable queue, so he's he uh, takes responsibility for nominating uh, networking fixes that should go to stable. So, so you can also write to him and to uh, nominate him. But I mean, um, I, he's taking a sort of authoritative in that area. Not all uh, any subsystem maintainer could could. Uh, Insist on doing that if they wanted. So is that some is that something that you welcome as a as an approach? Does that uh, offload you from uh, a lot of work or somewhat? Yeah, um, because he's he's taking care of backporting. Um, that does that does take some work off me. Yeah. Any more questions? All right, then I think I might be done here. Okay. Yep. Yep.